Hey guys, thank you for watching the Slat Rock channel. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notified every time we post a new video. And if you've already done so, just make sure that it's still active. Today we present you with seven weird and wonderful moments from Survivor Series 2017. Matt Hardy vs. Elias, witnessed by empty seats. In 2018, Matt Hardy and Elias have been two of Monday Night Raw's most entertaining stars, gathering a legion of fans over the past year. The Living Truth has turned himself into one of Raw's biggest fan favorites, while Hardy won the Andre the Giant Battle Royal and the Raw Tag Team Championships before announcing his retirement this September. But at last year's Survivor Series, the two stars were relegated to the pre-show, wrestling to a horde of empty seats as fans slowly shuffled their way into the arena. The worst part of this is that it wasn't Hardy's first time wrestling to nobody, as the former ECW champion had competed in a six-person tag on the pre-show for SummerSlam that same year. Like most kickoff matches, the bout happened with a slack, dawdling pace, with a general lack of interest, though it was definitely the right call to have Elias defeat the veteran, pinning Hardy after a drift away. Fortunately, both men had a much better time in 2018, and while they can't be blamed for the lack of a crowd, this match certainly should have been on the main card. Alexa's Dominance Over Charlotte when Raw Women's Champion Alexa Bliss was announced to face SmackDown Women's Champion Charlotte Flair, many fans could not call who would win. Both women have been heavily pushed since joining the main roster, with Flair being the final Divas Champion and Bliss being the first woman to hold the Raw and SmackDown Women's titles. If things weren't confusing enough, the match was incredibly odd from a creative perspective, with Alexa physically dominating the match despite her smaller stature. It arguably would have made more sense to have Flair be the more physically imposing during the match, with Bliss, being a heel, resorting to underhanded methods to get the upper hand. Lasting 15 minutes, the match probably could have done with a few minutes being shaved off, with the middle of the contest feeling incredibly padded. The two superstars were able to keep the match on the rails, and despite a botched big boot, Flair was able to make the petite powerhouse tap in a match that should have given so much more. Tag Teams Showcased Their Brilliance It's hardly surprising that when the Usos and the Bar faced off, the two teams absolutely stole the show at the pay-per-view, with all four men being established in the tag team division. A year after turning heels, the Usos had become a must-see team on Tuesday nights, a far cry from their years as generic smiling babyfaces with absolutely no character. Now embracing their darker side, Jimmy and Jay were as relentless as ever, unleashing a flurry of devastating superkicks on the Europeans. In kind, the bar hit hard with some grueling blows to the brothers, leaving both men battered and bruised. While there was some miscommunication early into the match, the teams moved past it and settled in well, giving fans of both brands something to smile about. The only disappointment from the match is at times it felt like both teams were holding back, perhaps for another match that sadly never happened. An incredible finish saw Jimmy tagging Jay while in mid-air, diving onto Cesaro, allowing his brother to hit a splash of his own onto Sheamus in one of the best matches of that night. Team Raw vs Team SmackDown – Women's Version In their efforts to promote equality in recent years, it was natural for the WWE to give the women's roster their own Survivor Series match, just as they had done for their male counterparts. Unfortunately, while well, the men's match showcased the best of all 10 superstars, with a few exceptions, the women's bout was awfully booked from the start. The women were quickly dropping left and right, with Raw's Bailey being the first to go, a real shame considering her massive popularity with the fans. A botched three count during Alicia Fox's elimination was frankly embarrassing, though it did allow Asuka to be the final woman repping Team Red. The Empress of Tomorrow more than held her own eliminating SmackDown's Carmella, Tamina, and Natalya to secure the win for her brand, giving Raw a 2-0 lead. Despite the many flaws in the match, the Empress was being booked perfectly, as the crowd got to witness the woman who was a true killer in NXT, and saw why she had held the developmental brand's women's championship for over 500 days. Main Event in its true sense By this point of the show, Raw was desperately needing a win, trailing 3-2 behind SmackDown. 
Fortunately, the red brand had an ace up their sleeve, as Universal Champion Brock Lesnar battled AJ Styles in what many fans worried would be a squash of the phenomenal one. Instead, the match ran a decent 15 minutes, and while Styles can always be relied upon to deliver, it was great to see Brock showing just as much effort into the match. In a David vs. Goliath match, Styles' calf crusher proved to be the difference maker, bringing the beast down to size, which Lesnar sold perfectly. In the closing moments, the former Impact star had seemingly overcome all the odds and aimed to get the win with his patented phenomenal forearm, only to be caught in an F5 to tie the score. A few nasty botches aside, the match far exceeded all expectations, and while the pinfall went to the Beast, it's hard to say that either man left the ring that night looking like anything less than a true champion. A 5-on-5 five five Failure With the scores tied 3-3, it all came down to the final match, as 5 of Raw's best took on 5 of SmackDown's very best. The teams were an odd cluster, however, as both teams were a mix of NXT call-ups and part-timers, which admittedly did let fans see some never-before-seen matches. Unfortunately for any fans of the yellow brand, their stars didn't last long, with Shinsuke Nakamura, Bobby Roode, and Samoa Joe being the first three eliminated, with Finn Balor following not long after. In a bizarre moment for the company that constantly talks about building the future, it was the 47-year-old Shane McMahon as the last man for Team Blue, against Braun Strowman, the 48-year-old Kurt Angle, and the 48-year-old Triple H. Just to make things weirder, the game would help eliminate the Olympian, pedigreeing Angle, his own team member, surprising all the fans. By this point, the crowd had fallen into a hush, and while Strowman was definitely made to look strong, eliminating three men from Team SmackDown, the match ended on a whimper, with the game pinning his brother-in-law to get the win. Triple H forgets to look ahead. After winning the Survivor Series match alongside Strowman, you'd have thought the game would have been on Cloud9 after winning and giving his wife Stephanie McMahon bragging rights over her brother. However, things quickly turned sour for the cerebral assassin, as he was threatened by the monster among men, with the sight of a tearful hunter cowering in a corner, a far sight from the same man who retired Mick Foley in Hell in a Cell. After receiving a running power slam from the monster among men, it seemed things couldn't get much worse for the game, that was, until after the cameras stopped rolling. Leaving the arena alongside Stephanie, the game suffered a rather humiliating incident, and, well, the clip really speaks for itself. The clip went viral soon after the pay-per-view, and after suffering this and the post-match beatdown from Strowman, it's clear that this show was one that Triple H was hoping to forget sooner rather than later. Well guys, that's our list. Can you tell us of any other weird and wonderful moments from Survivor Series 2017? If so, drop us a comment down below and let us know. If you like this video, don't forget to check out our previous video, Top 10 Unfaithful Team Members in the History of WWE Survivor Series. If you did like this video, don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified every time we post a new video. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and as always, thank you for watching. Oh, hey folks, I'm WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan, and if you want to listen to a good podcast, listen to my good buddies Jim and Rando at Suplex City Limits. That's the podcast to check out wrestling. Tough guy. Ho! Oh!